Friday. Things got a little crazy around here um, with us moving and things of that nature. So I wasn't able to record and post a video on Friday. So what I'm going to do today is do two separate videos. One about um, what I was going to talk about on Friday, so our fertility journey and kind of where we're sitting with that. And then I'm going to post another video a little bit later today um, speaking kind of about what I've been through so far with my husband in the Air Force um, and how I've been coping and things of that nature. So let's get started. So this video is going to be a little bit about our journey through fertility, what we've been through um, when we started, when we started treatments, when we started testing, things of that nature. Um, so we started trying just before we got married um, in November of 2012 is when we got married. Um, in September of that same year, we thought um, that we were pregnant. We, well, I had taken a pregnancy test um, in September, very early September of that year, and it was um, positive. We um, were going to make an appointment to see a doctor um, a few weeks later, um, but before we could even make an appointment, I took another test and it was negative. And shortly after that, um, I had started a new, a new period cycle. So we weren't, uh, we ended up not being pregnant and after that had happened, he and I started talking and really getting into when we wanted to have kids, why we wanted to have kids. Um, and so in about September we weren't pregnant, October we decided that if we had gotten pregnant it'd be okay because we'd be getting married the next month anyways and then um, we really started trying to have a baby in November of 2012 right after we got married. Um, after all of that we tried for just over two years before we started to question um, is something going on, what's wrong, why haven't we gotten pregnant, yet. Um, so we started seeing a doctor in January of 2015. Um, I went to my OBGYN and she specializes in fertility so we were able to speak with her about our concerns and things of that nature. Um, so we sat down with her one day, him and I both went in, and we told her about our concerns, how long we had been trying, and she spoke with us and let us know that our first step kind of was um, for him to do some testing. They wanted him to do uh, what's called an essay, a semen analysis, to check and make sure that everything with him was fine um, and everything worked just fine for him. Um, my first test is called an HSG, a hysteral self pinkogram. Um, it's pretty much where they insert dye into your uterus and into your fallopian tubes and take an x-ray image of it to make sure that um, your tubes are open and there's nothing funny um, going on in that aspect. Uh, once we um, got both results of the tests back, um, my results I got back the same day and his results we had to wait a couple of weeks. Um, all of his stuff came back normal. On my HSG, we did find out that I have a bicoronary uterus. Um, instead of my uterus being up like this, my uterus is shaped more like a heart. Um, my doctor did tell us that that's not usually a cause of infertility, but it can cause issues later on once we do get pregnant. Um, I have a higher likelihood of miscarriages, and I have a higher likelihood um, of preterm labor and cesarean sections because of um, my uterus. Once we found out that there was no fertility issues with the HSG, we went on to another test um, and that's a hysterosonogram. That's where they do an ultrasound internally of my uterus um, once they inject saline into my uterus. Um, that's checking for any abnormalities, endometriosis, polyps, and things of that nature. Um, through that test, we were um, told that I had what's called a polyp, which is an, a growth for the most part, um, an abnormal growth inside my uterus. Generally, they're just, um, they take care of themselves, but they wanted to um, take it out for me. So they had scheduled um, what's called a, a hysteroscopy with DNC. Um, 
and pretty much they went in and did the hysteroscopy, uh, which is when they take a big long tube and they insert it into your uterus and they it's a camera uh, where they take it and they look and make sure that everything looks okay in there. Um, and the DNC um, is something that people have when they have miscarriages and things like that. It's where they dilate your uterus, or they dilate your cervix, I'm sorry, and then they go in and they scrape um, the sides of the uterus to get everything out. Well, once they got in um, for this surgery for me and did the hysteroscopy, they went in and they found that what they thought was the polyp looked to be more that it was just a shadow on the, or, um, on the hysterosonogram. Um, so I woke up from my surgery and they had told me that they ended up not doing anything and that um, I would have to go back in to see my doctor the next week to go over what our options would be for our next steps. Um, that's all the testing we've done so far. Um, that's all the testing that she would do. And so since she didn't find anything on either of the two tests that she did, and all of my blood work came back normal, nothing was abnormal in my blood work either, um, she decided that we would do a couple cycles of a drug that's called Clomid or Clomiphene and it stimulates ovulation for the most part or enhances ovulation um, to help conceive a child. We um, did four cycles of Clomid unsuccessfully. Um, the Clomid, I don't think I myself or my husband Alex would ever want me to be on it again. I have um, the hormones and the medication are very strong for me and I have a lot of side effects from the medications. I get um, hot flashes as well as mood swings. I get headaches and um, a lot of the side effects that they say you could get, I get. Um, one of the only side effects that I didn't get when I was on the Clomid was weight gain. I was very lucky that I didn't gain a ton of weight. I did gain a little bit of weight, which is completely normal on Clomid, um, but I didn't gain a ton of weight like a lot of people do. Um, we did four cycles of that, like I said, and that was unsuccessful. And we decided um, after those four months, we knew that there was only a few more months until he was going to leave for basic training. So we decided to take those months off um, fertility medications and doing any more testing. Um, I was going to go see what's called a reproductive endocrinologist who specializes in fertility and things like that. That's their main focus. They focus on IVF, IUIs, um, IVF, inter in vitro fertilization, and IUI is intrauterine insemination. Um, one is outside of the body and one is inside of the body. Um, IVF, you take the egg out of the female and you take the sperm from the male and you um, fertilize them outside of the body and then you reinsert them into the body and hope that they stick. And IUI is you take the sperm from the man um, and insert it into the uterus of the woman and on a timed specific, knowing exactly when that egg is going to drop time, um, and hope that it fertilizes itself and implants itself. Um, but unfortunately the doctor would, wasn't able to get me in on time and um, told me that before they did any kind of treatment that I needed to lose some weight um, before they did anything. And um, so that kind of leaves us where we are now. Uh, we haven't been able to try since he's been gone. It's been just about 100 days um, since he's been gone and we hadn't tried for a couple of months prior to that either. Um, so we're looking forward to when we're back together again and we can start trying again and hopefully once we get um, back together and we try for a couple of months and if we're still unsuccessful we will hopefully be able to um, see a reproductive endocrinologist or see a doctor on base and kind of see what our options are. Um, so as always if you have any questions about fertility or anything um, comment below and if you like this video give it a big thumbs up. If you want to hear more about our journey together and our fertility, kind of see where everything goes, hit subscribe.